With the help of your local conservation district, you've designed, selected, and planted. Now it's time to take care of your seedlings. The first thing to think about is they are terrible competitors with weeds and grass. So the extent you can keep weeds and grass from uh, away from your trees, the better you're, they're going to do. You can do this with a mulch. Um, we lay down, we use a black fabric mulch. Um, there's a lot of mulches available. My advice to you is uh, pay a little more and get a good heavy one. A lot of the mulches that you're going to find at the box stores that are fairly inexpensive tear very easily. Uh, you're going to get them out in the wind. Um, you're going to have animals walking over, people walking over them. You're going to have holes in them and they're not going to hold up. So put a good uh, mulch down if you're going to use fabric. Um, I recommend a three ounce uh, per square foot or, or heavier. Um, that's really going to hold up. You also want to think about um, when you locate it, put it in such a way that, you, that it's easy to care for in terms of mowing. Mowing is another way that you can keep those weeds down, and particularly from shading the trees. Um, if you've laid them out with enough room between the rows, you should be able to, for the life of the uh, trees, to mow between them. But it's really critical for the mowing when they're young and they're small and they're really not going to compete very well um, with weeds and grasses. Once they're uh, fairly tall, uh, they're going to shade out the weeds and grasses. Um, you want to think about, do you want to add supplemental moisture? Um, obviously on a lot of the living snow fences there is no supplemental moisture added, so the trees will grow. Um, but if you really want them to flourish, and most people want them to grow quickly, supplemental moisture um, is really going to help. The easiest way to do that is a drip system, which is uh, very easy to put together. Um, for most of the smaller, uh, you know, unless you're talking about a farm scale windbreak, um, you can probably uh, do it fairly easily. It's a good, easy do-it-yourself project. And then your moisture, or your, the moisture that you're adding, is really going to go where you need it. Give, uh, make sure that you water them those first few years to really uh, give them, get some vigorous growth. Once they get older, then you can back off on the watering or quit watering them all together. Although if you really want the trees to continue to flourish, you know, if this is something near your house where you're really looking for um, the trees to flourish and look good, then you may want to consider some sort form of supplemental moisture for the life of the windbreak. Generally, if you put down a good fabric mulch, you plant them right, and you um, give them some supplemental moisture, you're going to have over 95% survival. You're not going to lose a lot of them. However, you are going to lose a few. You know, the, the uh, dog may go out and decide to chew one off. Uh, jackrabbits seem to tend to like windbreak sometimes, and sometimes they just the trees just don't take. Um, oftentimes, if you bought your trees from the conservation district, you got extra trees. What you should do with those extra trees and put them in a protected area and grow them for replacements. The nice part about that is then if it's two years old, you've lost a tree, you have a two-year-old tree to replace it and so you'll get good growth there. So you may want to consider your extra trees, planting them as, as replacement or even buying a few extra trees just so you can have some replacements available. If you've lost more than you had in re, uh, your replacement, your extras, or you didn't decided not to buy them, um, again, you can replace the trees. That's really going to come down to um, when they're small, um, you can replace them. Just go back to the conservation district. The districts uh, will sell you trees. Generally, you're going to have to buy them in the, the lots of which the district sells them. Uh, but check with the district. The district may have uh, some oddball trees or somebody that didn't want all theirs and so they'll have some available for you. Once the, the uh, planting gets larger then still you can get the small uh, seedling trees but at that point um, obviously you'd like them to be more the size of what you had. Um, there's a lot, a lot of options available to you. My recommendation is don't go out and buy anything too big. For one thing it's going to be very expensive. The other is um, a big tree uh, planted in there probably is not going to thrive. So buy something four foot or less tall. Um, buy a nice, uh, I like the smaller potted trees. Um, they, that way they have their entire root system. 
you can plant them in the windbreak. Now they may be a little smaller than what you have there, but they'll come along fairly rapidly. In a lot of cases, if you've got a good potted tree, it's going to catch up with a big bald and burlap that you paid four times as much for fairly quickly. With proper care, your trees can grow and flourish. But remember, your local conservation district is here to help. 